Find the area between the polar curves, R equals two over cosine theta, R equals four cosine theta, where X is greater than two. Our checklist for finding this area. First, we'll sketch both of our curves. Okay, they'll give us an idea of how they're situated, and we'll be able to tell where the inside and outside functions are. Then, we need to find the intercepts. They'll give us our limits of integration. And then finally, we want our formula for the area of a region in the plane described by polar coordinates. So, here we'll have a double integral okay, over our region against r dr d theta. The way we remember that, you draw a polar rectangle. So what do we do? We're gonna have a wedge. Okay, the angle is gonna be a small change in theta. We call it d theta. Okay, the length of one side is gonna be r, the radius. Then we're gonna want one side of our polar rectangle to be dr. So it's just gonna be a change in r. The length of the far arc here is gonna be, okay, it's radius times angle in radians. So that'll be r d theta. So the area of our box is gonna be r dr d theta. We'll also need the equations x equals r cosine theta, y equals r sine theta, r squared equals x squared plus y squared. Now, step one, we sketch our picture. For our first curve, we have r equals two over cosine theta, push the cosine to the other side, and then r cosine we already saw is equal to x. So we're gonna get x equals two, so this is a vertical line going through two. Now, we check a few points, just to get an idea of how r comes out. So if we put in zero for theta, so that's gonna be the angle measured against positive x-axis, we're gonna go out by two. Okay, we notch up a little bit to pi six, we get roughly 2.3. So we go along the angle for pi six, and then we notch at 2.3, which keeps us on the line. Pi fourth, same idea, we get 2.8. Go along that angle, two and then 0.8, we stay on the line. Pi thirds gives me a four. Same idea, we stay on the line. And then pi halves, well, we're gonna get plus infinity here. So there's not gonna be a point that goes with that. And if you notice, okay, this half line here is parallel to our actual line. So they never actually meet. Next curve, we have r equals four cosine theta. So I multiply both sides by r. It's gonna be r squared equals four r cosine theta r squared is x squared plus y squared, r cosine theta is equal to x. Push the four x to the other side, then I wanna complete the square. So we're gonna take half of what's before the x, so it's gonna be a minus two. So we x minus two squared, and then we subtract off minus two squared, which gives me a minus four. Push it to the other side as a four. So we're gonna have a circle, radius two, with center two comma zero. Let's check a few points just to see how the R's come out. We put in angle zero, out's gonna come four. So that's gonna mean if we're along the positive x-axis, we're gonna go out by four. For pi fourths, we get two squared to two. So if we go along 45 degrees, we're gonna go out by two squared to two, which puts us there. For pi halves, I get a zero. And then for three pi fourths, we have a minus two squared to two. So the idea is gonna be, we're on this angle here, but since it's negative, we flip it through the origin to get that point there. Okay, then you can kind of see how everything falls on the circle. Now, we have our circle, we have our line, we have x greater than two. So we're trying to find the area of this semicircle. Of course, we know how to get the area of that without any calculus, so this is just gonna be a check on our work. Now, our next step, we wanna find the intercepts. So we'll take our equations, set them equal to each other, and then solve for theta. So out's gonna come cosine of theta equals plus or minus square root of two over two. For my picture, I note, okay, cosine is gonna be the x value in the unit circle. So we really only care about the positive square root of two over two. Those are gonna be multiples of pi fourth for the angle. So we get pi fourths, quadrant four, seven pi fourths. Now the catch here is we have to think about how we're sweeping our area out. So I went from pi fourths to seven pi fourths, 
That's going to start here and then go around like this. So that's not what I want. What I'd rather do is, okay, we'll start at minus pi fourths, go through zero, and then get to pi fourths. So you check your points. Okay, you notice, start at minus pi fourths, you're going to be at two squared to two. For zero, that's going to bring me out to four on the circle. Then pi fourths, that's going to give me two squared to two up here. So we want to use these for our limits. Now, when I set our limits up, what's going to happen? If I'm looking at how we work along the radius, we're going to start at the line and then move our way out to the circle. So the lower limit is going to be 2 over cosine theta going out to the upper limit for cosine theta. Then for theta, we'll go from minus pi fourths to pi fourths. We're going to start here and then sweep out to up here. Last step, we set up our integral and then do our work. So, I set up my limits of integration. R is going to be in the inside. Okay, if we integrate with respect to R, it'll eliminate R from our integral. Everything will be left in terms of theta. So, if you try to do theta first, what's going to happen is you'll be left in R, and then your limits are going to have theta in them, and then you'll know you did something wrong. Okay, we work it out. A derivative of R is going to be 1 half R squared. Okay, we have our limits, so we evaluate and then take the difference. Then, what are we going to do? So I can't work with either of these as is, so I'll note that 1 over cosine squared is secant squared theta. Okay, it's any derivative is tangent, so that's going to work for us. And then cosine squared we set equal to 1 half plus 1 half cosine of 2 theta. Okay, load everything in with the substitutions, and then we just take antiderivatives. So we get this for our antiderivative, I evaluate at pi fourths minus pi fourths, take the difference. When you work that out, what comes out is going to be 2 pi. Now we have our check, we have a circle of radius 2, and we only want half of it. So the area of the whole circle is 4 pi, so it's pi r squared, divided by 2 gives me 2 pi, that checks my answer.